Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is, where you are. Good evening, sir. Nice to see everybody here today. I'm here to answer any outreachy questions you have. Our, our greatest sadness as a team is we only have one slot for sure to offer and a lot of interest. So I just want you to contribute what you feel that you can and um, fill out your application, and unfortunately, it's a very constrained environment right now. Um, but I am happy to answer any of your questions or help you get started, clarify anything that's not clear already. But <clears throat> I'm here to listen to you or to answer questions. Yes, sir. So um, I guess I should start. So um, I'm mm -hmm. a yeah, so I'm Vincent and I'm a CSE undergrad, computer science undergrad from India. Yeah. Currently in my pre-final Welcome. year. Welcome, sir. So yeah, uh, so I plan to join uh, Chaos for uh, the outreach internship this summer with the project uh, Augur Inclusivity Documentation. Okay, so you would follow the, follow the application process and I think... I don't There are some pull requests that I see that a number of people have made to Augur. I have been, I was traveling last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I will merge, I will review those pull requests sometime today. Yeah. So, so I would just like to know, like on the outreachy page, it's mentioned that it's a documentation related um, internship. Yes, it is. And yeah, there are so, two projects mm -hmm. that are potent possible. And we don't, you know, we're going to, we're going to do our best to just pick the best candidate and um, have a little bit of agnosticism around which project is chosen. So contribute to the one of the two that you think I mean, you can contribute to both of them if you like, but I think your outreach application has to specify one. Um, yeah, so, so I just wanted to know, like, because it's a documentation project, we just have to focus on the documentation or any development stuff has to be That's, done. Um, I would say that it is entirely a documentation project. The only caveat with that might be that part of the thing, like if you choose the Augur project, part of what you'll likely be helping us document is the installation and mm -hmm. making and um, in parallel with that, we're actually doing significant a significant amount of work to make the installation easier, and and so that will be that that so so I mean, but I would I would you know if we have an intern, I ha we'll also have some Google Summer of Code and a Google Season of Docs person, and the Google Summer of Code, a number of those people will be doing Augur, so um, there'll be a community that can help you if you have difficulty installing it and I can of course help as well mm -hmm. um, so actually I'm, like uh, because it's a documentation project okay I can focus on documentation but I'm not absolutely. only limited to that I want to focus on the development part also is it well, okay I mean I mean it is a it is a documentation project so the outreachy part would be focused on documentation for sure um that's where we want that. to, yeah I mean I'll you know, sure, you can contribute, but you could contribute to Augur without being part of Outreachy because the, the Outreachy man, or the sort of way we've scoped those projects is focused on documentation. So mm -hmm. if you did uh, any contributions to a project like Augur or Grimoire Lab, any of that would be on your own time. We would, so the Outreachy projects are not intended to support software development, but instead support documentation. Mm -hmm. And so one thing also I wanted to ask you, like, how should we get started with it? Like, I've gone through the previous documentation. And uh, as you had suggested, like in the email which I sent you, I tried to install Augur on my local PC. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and so mm -hmm. if, 
you know, if that proves too, you know, too much of a challenge, and it will, if you have Windows, for example, then there's plenty that can be improved about the documentation um, in terms of navigability and readability, even if you're not able to successfully install it. Um, mm -hmm. Successfully installing it is not a prerequisite for making a documentation contribution. There's a, there's a lot of things that could be worded better, more clearly navigated, more succinctly. If you notice, for example, one thing I consider kind of a defect in Augur is there's the quick start menu page and there's also a separate installation page and they are not consistent with each other right now. So, like, so you don't have to install Augur to make a contribution there. And again, we, we do also have another project. Mm -hmm. Yes, so but about the other project, I don't think it was mentioned in that much detail, like on the page. Um, I thought we had a pretty, pretty detailed. Which page is it not mentioned in okay. detail on? Yeah, I'll just check and just a second. I am also checking. Um... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how I didn't see it before. Yeah, it's written, it's written. Okay, fine. And so the other project, the second one is related to development, I guess. The, there are... There Conversion are... rate metric. Ye yes. I am, yes, but there's, um, yes, I'm logging into the outreach right now to my outreach so I can see. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the the implementation of the convergent rate. That would be um, that does involve a little bit of development, but metrics models are kind of interesting. So historically, mm -hmm. chaos has developed a series of metrics. We have over 70 that are fully released right now. And of those metrics that are fully released, we've begun to create what are called metrics models. And one of the metrics models is this conversion rate metric. And it is fairly um, clearly specified um, on a page. Let me see if I can draw that page to your attention. Um, it is, I think, under the... Yeah, yeah. Under the... It might be. Yeah, actually, I didn't click the link. I thought. Yeah. It was just yeah. I'm trying. Which link did you click? So the um. Oh yeah. The uh, chaos project two under that implement conversion rate metric. It's a link. Okay, and you see the project skills. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, the project skills. So it's not mentioned. Like it's written. The mentor did not list any required. Preferred or nice skills. to have skills, yeah. yeah. That that could be um, a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought it was incomplete because I didn't scroll. Yeah, down. it looks like uh, I didn't check those skills. I think I think a nominal familiar familiarity with Python is important, but explaining the metric and relying on others to do the development would also be a valid way of engaging with um, with that metric because. There's really there's really a good deal of explanation that's required for these metrics models, and so making them read pretty and look pretty, following uh, in in collaboration with the developer, is is a completely valid way of contributing to that project. Yeah, so, so if you could just in short, like what you say, uh, describe like both the projects, like what you all are expecting from the what you say 
on the other than what's written over here in the description like how we should get started what's the end goal you're looking towards by the end of this april the initial contribution phase because we are all like a little bit confused about what to do because so, when i went through the gsoc page they had like mini tasks type There's so nothing here, so. yeah the what we would expect is um a little bit of documentation around it or a little bit of elaboration of documentation for the for the implement the conversion rate metric project i believe i added some micro tasks for that in the issue i guess i don't know why that link doesn't show up as a So if you're approaching this, um, if you're approaching it from an outreachy perspective, I think you could read the open issue and there's a great deal of specification of things and there's ways that it's visualized and there are some references. So I think you could submit a comment on the issue that, that elaborates further on some of the ideas i think if um if you want to i think i could offer another task there as well mm -hmm. which would be to make improvements to an existing um so i i don't know i think i think you could i think you can just anything that you can create to um sort of bring an idea of the realization of this metric into a more elaborated state. And so there are some example visualizations, some example data collection strategies. And for those of you who don't know where we are right now, we're talking about the implementation of the conversion rate metric project. I'm just going to post a link to that here. Yep. Uh, the chat. So that's there. And that that's so that's a metric model, or it should probably be called metrics model. And what's what's I think the question is, how would you go about adding documentation um, to that? So, but I had another doubt, like I went through what you just sent and it's written GSOC. So, I mean, is it is, it it is written, it? it is written towards the GSOC. Um, mm -hmm. So, so what do you expect this? So anymore? what's missing is um, a definition of the metrics model in. Uh, so what I can do is I can modify. Let me modify that issue. Slightly. Because I and I'll show you what I'm doing. Because I can I can now see what some of your questions are are actually related to. This is helpful for us. I'll just share my screen. So, Here and the specific working group.
You, you can do that using language from the issue itself. Um, so that will be created under the computing, computing community engagement working group. And there's an example. Let me just find an example. Metrics model. So under metrics models, we also have uh, implementations. Mm -hmm. And so community welcomingness is the one implementation that we've done so far. So I've updated this to just differentiate um, and I guess I used headings that are too big, so I'll fix that up. to differentiate what some useful micro tasks might be for outreachy students compared to GSOC students, because we do, we do expect uh, slightly different things. And we don't expect necessarily coding skills for the outreachy candidate. So if you could just like explain in short, like what are these metrics? I mean, <laughs> I... Yeah, so I understand why that is a little bit difficult to grok. So um, let me just jump back to chaos. So if you go to the metrics models working groups, um, it this is a brief explanation of the working group. It meets at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time, which I don't know what time that is in um, Indian Standard Time or other global times. It's not convenient for Europe at all uh, this metric the metrics models working group emerged out of our collaboration with an asia asia pacific specific working group and so we we make the meeting times convenient for china principally mm -hmm. and so this one's at 6 p.m central daylight time in the united states every other tuesday there is not a meeting this tuesday uh, there is another working group that is somewhat related called the um, Asia Pacific Working Group, where you could get some ideas. They meet uh, every other Wednesday, basically every, uh, when the, the weeks that the metric model working group doesn't meet, uh, the Asia Pacific group meets. And so the next meetings for those are, and I'll just put them in the Zoom chat, which, okay. So this is the, that's the, so Asia Pacific next meeting is April 6th at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time, which is Chicago. And the next meeting for metrics models would be the following Tuesday. Uh, so that would be at 6 p.m. That'd be April 11th, right now, April 12th. Uh, oops, dang, Asia Pacific time, I got totally wrong. We put the corrected version in there. Yes, 6 p.m. Yeah, that's wrong. It's uh, April 6th at 8 a.m. Central Daylight Time, Chicago. Putting that in the chat. And I can also refer you to, we do have a calendar on our main website. Mm -hmm. We're under participate, I believe. Um, 
subscribing to the newsletter is a good way to to get oriented. Right. Um, yeah, here's our okay. So our Google Calendar, which actually shows all of the different working group meetings. Um, Google, so all of our meetings are in a Google Calendar at the bottom of this link. <clears throat> so hopefully that helps answer some questions. I want to give everyone a chance to ask other questions that they might have. Um, Diana, you were here early. Let me just call on you to see if you have any questions that I haven't addressed uh, as yeah. of yet. Um, hi, I'm Dana. I'm also an outreach intern. And uh, my question was actually, I did open an issue on the auger for the documentation, because as you said earlier, there's like quick start and then there's like getting like there's a lot of sections that are very similar uh, yes. and be nice to put it all in one page, I guess, uh, for the installation. So my question is, um, when we have some um, suggestions or improvements for the documentation, should we open an issue first and wait for some confirmation that these changes are actually needed or should we go ahead with the pull request and then change make changes like afterwards after some reviews i think you can go ahead and like um i'm more attentive to issues than i've been in the last week usually uh but you can you can go ahead in that case that's definitely a point of confusion i completely agree and um, I just commented that you can go ahead and get started with that and do a pull request to change it. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, I believe there was another hand raised. Uh, Precious, is that how I say your name? Can I? Oh, first, sure, yeah. Fernando. That's cool. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, hi, nice to meet you, Sean. Um, I'm Fernanda. I live in Mexico City, and I'm um, I want, I also want to participate with Cows for the outreach project. Um, I'm interested in the metrics, um, in the metrics uh, project. And okay. well, at the beginning, I saw that there was this list of mic of micro tasks on the Google of, yeah. on the Google Summer of Code. And I complete some of the oh, some of these tasks. And awesome. well now I'm a little confused because in well um I don't know if I should keep going with the task and also can like try to add to the descriptions and join some of these some of the working meetings to I think I think um, if you've already started on what were the Google Summer of Code tasks, you can continue to work on those, and and you could participate in meetings. I added the so I wouldn't restrict you. I don't. I wouldn't say that the maybe I should change the headings in the issue editing, but so that if you wanted to contribute to the Google Summer of Code tasks on that on that particular one, that would be just that would be just fine. Um, um, yes, about um, about the task number four, I'm a little confused because I'm not sure if um, I should be doing, well, I don't know if I, in the Grimor lab, I should be playing with the visualization uh, section and update that, well, or can I like, do my own with the data and can I like, screenshot my own visualizations, or it means that I have to do a community report because it's also mentioned on that task so that does confuse me a lot i don't know if you could clarify a little and um, that's one of my hmm. well sorry i have several questions about yeah so you could use the community reports for development just to add some you could use that as an example that's and cr create a notebook yes yes um yeah so, but that would certainly be a, that's an easier way to start perhaps for outreachy. Okay, and about task number, I'm not sure if it's task number two or three that talks about um, improvement or if you found any issues in Spagling, Augur or Grimoire Lab. Well, I actually found some and I make a list, but I don't know if just when I upload my 
my repository with the micro task within my task i just kind of like post that list of if i have to make um issues on the on the actual Gumo lab or our pages or just list my problems on the when i upload my repository so i think i think they make you in the outreach application and you have to double check that um they make you kind of point to a contribution that you've made so if you're comf i mean i think if you're comfortable creating issues and describing things that's that's a valid way of making a contribution in this phase especially if you're doing the the tasks that are principally gsec oriented i think getting up to speed on those tools and making a pull request might be a little bit more difficult you know we want to we want to not have the task consume more time than would be reasonable for illustrating your skills and what you would bring to the project and and so opening issues is a lighter weight way of making a contribution and I think then you could point to those issues in your uh, outreachy application as, as okay. a contribution that you've made that you know pull I mean okay. pull, pull requests are more straightforward however I think it's it's up to you if you want to make a contribution I mean I think I want to think I'm thinking of your time and in investment and you know if, if your time and investment in chaos is principally contingent on the outreachy program and becoming part of it, knowing that we only have one slot, probably. I, I think the issue is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to take up a lot of your time if that's the only reason that you're engaging in the project and if you won't be having the time to engage otherwise. Um, so we want to respect, we don't want to take advantage of anyone, I think is what I would say. So instead of spending two days making a contribution to one of the tools, it's perfectly reasonable to enumerate a bunch of work that needs to be done in an issue. Okay, um, that's cool. And also, so well, is it okay? Well, as I understand on the last part of you told Vincent, if I create kind of like a mini um, um, a their notebook with some of the of the functions of task, um, I mean, something like that would be useful. I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking. Yes, about it, it would be. Something. It would be useful. Yeah, I think uh, in the case of, for example, the metrics model task or project, if if you did one little thing in in the Jupyter notebook, that would be useful. I think. Yeah, you know, I'm just uh, just trying to be fair with your time. I think figuring out how to write the query and run the query. The, but certainly the community reports our community reports repository gives you some really solid work examples but you may need to you know access data that's not you may not understand the schema fully um, it is in the auger documentation but i also again to respect your time if if your principal you know desire is to become an outreachy candidate and the limits we have um, it would take more time to make that kind of contribution um, okay. But it's, I mean, obviously that's appreciated. We just, I, I do not want to, again, take advantage. I want us to offer you a reasonable micro task that, that doesn't take two days to complete. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, thank you very much for your time and clarifying no. all of this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I appreciate you all taking the time to be here. Are there other questions that anyone has? I know that um, Precious had her hand up earlier, but her hand up earlier, but perhaps they no longer have a question or it was answered by others. Oh, hi. Um, my question was already answered. So. Okay, awesome. Awesome. We also have a, one Thank of the, you. sure, one of the members of our community, Armstrong, is with us as well. Um, no, okay, so. Uh, Augustina, I see your hand is raised. Yes, hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. So um, I have a question also about uh, the outreachy contributions. Mm -hmm. I'm also an outreachy intern. Um, and I mean, I was uh, making some pull requests um, to update some of the documentation while I was reading it. 
um, but I have a problem that I don't have enough space in my computer to um, to um, install Augur or any yeah. other, you know, um, also a remote lab. So I'm a bit concerned about that. Do you have um, space to clone the Augur repo? And oh, just don't have space to, do you have space to clone, for example, the Augur repo? Just not yes. enough. Um, yeah, so, not just to install the program. That's the problem. So if you if you have space to install it, but not space to that's what we're looking for here. I mean, I can work if, with if it. If you don't uh, have space update. to install, yeah, you can still yes. update documentation. Okay, great. Without running and installing the program. And that would be a valuable contribution because I'm, I don't know if it's um, annoying to have a lot of pull requests about updating typos and things like that. I mean, I was reading through the chaos documentation and um, I read that there's lots of uh, different types of contributions that can be made. And I mean, I mean, I'm interested in contributing in different ways, so. Yeah, I, I think, I don't think it's annoying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just that I'm new and I'm still uh, learning how to use Git. So, um, I mean, at first I, I had some troubles and then I got to, uh, to get it right, you know, to, to make a, a decent pull request. So <laughs> uh, yeah. I was a bit unsure about that. Yep. No, I think you're, um, you're, you, what would you be doing would be exactly right. Okay, great. And can I also ask you another question? Of course. Yeah. So um, I was checking out the metrics group and uh, I mean, the metrics model and, and the different types of metrics that there are and different models that they're pushing now, or like maybe they're under review. And um, I'm interested in helping translate uh, some of these metrics uh, in Spanish. That's my native oh. language. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm, to be honest, I'm already working in one of the issues that you have, but I was wondering if that would be uh, also a valuable contribution uh, to the metrics um, side of the project that you have. I know that there's not many um, requirements listed, so I'm not really sure. It's not one of the requirements listed, um, though we do try to release everything at this point in both Spanish and, and um, English. Chinese. We, um, and Chinese, yep, yeah, as well as English. And so it certainly would be a contribution to, for example, translate uh, some of the metrics models into, into Spanish. I think the way to do that would be to open an issue in the translations repo which okay you can do here and just uh, uh say that you want to i'm going to put a link in the chat i mean i commented in one of the issues that i found um it's about uh sorry let me just read it project demographics uh -huh. and i mean i tagged um which repo is project demographics in uh it's in translations but um oh, okay all right um big e dei so it would be about diversity and yeah i was i was wondering yeah, I mean, how any of should the, upload it. so yeah. like any of the issues that are open for the span with the spanish tag on them mm -hmm. uh, certainly translating those would be a valid and useful contribution great yeah Okay, great. All right. Thank you so much. No, no problem. Okay, I'll stick around. But I'll just uh, um, mute myself. Okay, sounds good. Diana, it looks like your hand is up. Yeah, I just thought uh, of a, another question. So, okay, the first question is, do you like assign issues to people? Like what's the, um, the process? Like, because also, and this is kind of related, uh, for example, in my issue that I opened for the documentation, especially for the installation guide, uh, that issue got a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, I mean, a lot of people want to contribute to that particular issue and they want to like 
uh, make changes for that. But I was just thinking like how to avoid so that a situation where a lot of people do the same changes, you know, and then it's kind of hard um, to decide which one to, to merge, right? Right. And I think, um, so I do, I, I think creating the pull request constitutes a contribution. And if multiple people create similar pull requests, I think that's okay. Um, obviously not all of them will get merged and, and that's okay. So um, don't worry about that. I think if that's the piece you want to work on, then then work on that it, because it is a it is a pretty easily identifiable open hole in the auger documentation and i think the goal for the outreach project is to is to make contributions in that area i i think if others have already done pull requests around that issue um you know just kind of do the pull request with a sort of your mind free of anything else other people might have contributed so that there's no confusion right but yeah. i also had a question because like a lot of people also mentioned how they want to work together on this issue uh, and i was just wondering if that's like something even possible like how would that i can't imagine how that would work in the I, outreach context. Yeah, I, think that, I think that would increase your coordination costs and knowing that we only can accept one person probably um, I, I don't, I mean, collaboration would, it would make it harder to know what your contribution is. And so in yeah. that, in that case, I think really it's better to perform your own work. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, yeah. Otherwise it just, yeah, I wouldn't know how to distinguish contributions and we don't have multiple internships, unfortunately. Other questions that folks have about outreachy projects that we've outlined or identified? I just wanted to ask, like, finally, like, how will you, based on what criteria you will be, like, selecting that one person? I mean, with the number of people who've expressed interest in our, in the chaos project, I think we're going to look at the application and we're going to look at the contributions. And there's going to be more than one person who we would love to bring on as an intern. Um, there could be 50 people that we'd love to bring on as an intern. And so um, how, how we decide is, is not, it, it's not going to be entirely objective. Um, it can't be because there'll be multiple, it'll be like uh, funding a grant in a way because there'll be more really good proposals than we can fund and so you know we'll narrow it down to the ones we think are really good and then we'll discuss it uh, with the team who's who's overseeing outreachy and you know reach out to our first candidate and it's the how that's determined is going to be i think a process of dis filtering and discussion you know, I can't, I can't give you like, if you hit these yeah. criteria, you'll be the person, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I think it's far too multivariate to, to say that we can do that, or that anyone could do that. And uh, like, what do you expect in the proposal? Like, what will we be doing through the period or? I mean, uh, it's whatever, I, I haven't completed an outreachy proposal myself, so aside from them requiring that you've made a contribution i think you know just fill out the proposal as thoughtfully as you can using their template okay so we'll you know, be I getting a template up this i well i mean i don't know maybe I, I was assuming there was a template but i would follow whatever guidelines outreachy provides um for making a submission so yes it it's the full application. So when you fill up the application, it's uh, in a certain manner. Yeah, <clears throat> there is a template. Okay. 
And I think there's an application link on the outreachy page that if it doesn't include the template, I just put it in chat. It does describe the process. Okay, so. So there's an essay. Um, it's about a 200 word limit, so that's not a very long essay. Um, they do give you some guidance on, it says 500 to 900 character essays are typically the one in the accepted group. Um, so they provide a little bit of guidance. Yeah, actually the essays are over like, that was the initial part. So we finished that, we've got selected through that. Now is the contribution period. Uh, okay, so then you can. So then I think the big thing is uh, going to the outreachy project list and recording your contribution. Contribution, yeah. Yeah, and when you record your contribution. I think you can point. So, for example, if you need to, uh, like, if you've created more than one issue or an issue in a pull request, I th I think the way that you could indicate multiple URLs like that would be to have something. Um, you know, I don't know how. I don't know what format they take the contributions in. But if they give you space for multiple URLs, if if you have like both an issue and a pull request include that there if if they only give you space for one URL, then hmm, go ahead and create like a Google Doc with all the links in it. That would be I would suggest that that work around if they don't want you to put multiple URLs in the app. And unfortunately, I can't see the app as a person mentoring a project. I will only see the applications submitted to a project. Hopefully that 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 I can anticipate that you would want to point to more than one issue or more than one pull request or more than one issue comment that you made, and so you can you can use a Google Doc if you're not allowed in the app to point to multiple different contributions. Yeah, so so my doubt was like it's just mentioned here, like add a contribution. There's nothing written about a proposal as such. So yeah, then I would say just follow follow the outreachy guidelines, which um, it's a process that they've defined. We haven't defined it. And so my and like I said, I can't see what it looks like to finish a proposal for our project. So I would simply do the best that you can. So then will it just be like a person with the maximum number of contribution will get like no or, it will not no, be a, no. it will not be any kind of a you know count of Content. contributions at all mm -hmm. no more contributions doesn't strengthen your proposal um mm -hmm. in our view um we're again we'll we'll have to i mean so there'll be a lot of factors that we take into account and there'll be a lot of applications for the one internship we have to offer so It'll be a so it'll be a process where the the team within chaos who's working on the outreachy program gets together and sort of looks at what we think are the strongest applications. So maybe we can narrow it from fifty to thirty or something um, at that point, and then we'll have to look at each application together and um, arrive at a consensus. Mm. Hi, Sean. Hi, City. Is that how I say Hi, your name? Um, yes, yes, that's right. Uh, no. uh, I am actually a GSOC potential contributor, so I have no clue if this uh, meet is the right place to ask oh, I mean, questions. 
This is certainly focused on outreachy, yeah, um, but for for GSOC, GSOC is a. We've, I've done that program more frequently, and mm -hmm. um, for there, it's really a question of completing the GSOC GSOC application and some micro tasks, and um, we have we have usually a much smaller contributor pool for GSOC than we do, or candidate pool, I should say, for GSOC than we do for outreachy. I, and our, pre our prior experience with outreachy was that we only had four people who were interested. So we've been a little bit surprised. And as you could tell last yeah. week, a little bit overwhelmed with the, with the volume of interest that our projects have attracted um, for outreachy. So for, for GSOC, just follow those rules. And if you have a question, um, and ask it in the GSOC Slack channel, uh, and I'll probably, okay. what, yeah, and I'll I'll probably schedule something for GSOC students this week as well. Thank you so much. Sure, no problem. If there are no other questions, we can uh, say goodbye to each other. If there are. More questions, um, now is a good time to bring them up. Okay. Um, if hearing no more questions, uh, I think I'll, I will just say, say thank you very much for taking the time to participate in this. I will make the recording of this discussion available through the Slack channel so that if people could not be here, then they at least can look at what we talked about and have the same insights that you do. And, and uh, you know, I appreciate, appreciate your participation in this discussion. Thank you. And uh, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>